All right, welcome back to another drawing challenge video. This is the second attempt at drawing a mythological creature using the Seventh Sanctum random generator. Like we did in our previous example, we created a flying squirrel owl horror. What I will do now is ask the generator to spit out another single creature and we'll see what it says. This creature evolved from other life forms. It looks like a squirrel sculpted into the form of a bee. It has no eyes. A strange miasma follows it. Now the one I just did was squirrel based. I, I do like the rest of it, but the I don't want something that's going to be a primary squirrel type shape. So let's let's try another one. This bizarre monster comes from the future. It resembles a flying fox and has the face of a whale. It has green quills covering its skin. It comes from the future. Flying fox and has the face of a whale. Okay. That's going to be an interesting combination of attributes. Flying fox and face of a whale. Let's see. Going back to the process, what we're going to start here is with here is primary experimenting with the, the rough shapes of what it is we're going to be drawing. Whales have really long, really long sort of tapered jaws, if I remember correctly. And a flying squirrel looks like a big winged rodent. If we're roughing a body here, they have the, I'm trying to think of like an outst outstretched pose, like, like this, because they have these arms and legs that go out and then this membrane that connects them which is how they fly flying f flying fox not flying squirrel it's well, essentially the same thing I think Let's see what their tails look like. Do they have long tails or short tails? Flying fox. Not flaying fox. They're more like a bat than a squirrel. Or a fox. Alright, flying fox. Let's see. Yeah, they're definitely more like a bat. So, a big winged bat with a whale's head. All right, this this is too big of a base outline. Let's see. Could try and do it symmetrically. Well, let's look up a whale. I'm all in here. And the whales have a long, depending on what type of whale, a gray whales, sort of a long face and big jaws and a throat. I'm 
Okay. I think I know how I want to deal with the whale part. But let's try and get a base pose using the flying fox. All intents and purposes, the flying fox is a bat. So this, whatever we draw here is going to be decidedly bat-like. Well, let's see. Let's draw the Batman logo. How many toes do these things typically have? Three? Go. Three toes for no. And let's see. Tracing in the shape of the arms. Going to about here. Doing some rough approximations. to do the head of a whale, this thing's going to look really silly. It looks something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think a head-on view is going to work because it's not going to show the it's not going to show the whale off too well. Hmm. Okay. Let's try another another pose. What if we did it from the side? We had the legs going over here. I'm drawing this thing from the feet up now. Normally I start with the head. And we go out like this. Oh, the, the wings go all the way down to the feet. It's kind of a thing with bats. By proxy, flying foxes, I suppose. Okay, this, this is getting a little bit closer. It's going to be very similar pose to the one I just did, though. Unless I go back like this. We'll figure out the other wing in a sec. We do that. And we put the face of our whale over here. Where are the eyes? Eyes are pretty high up on the face, so eyes would be over here. Well, still not sure how I want to do that other wing. It's probably going to be trailing backwards like that. Because I can't really fit another wing over here. Well, let's see. We'll leave that there for now as a sort of placeholder. Going back to the flying fox, flying fox type attributes here, and create an underbelly just like we did in the previous one. And 
use some shading to sort of make that stand out a little bit. I think this primary for the pose will work. Might have to fix the fur. What we'll do is we'll clean up the outline and then work on tackling the rest of the parts, the components of this creature. What I'll do is I'll go and start just cleaning up the outline. And think about what I want to talk about for next several minutes while I'm doing this. In gaming news, again recording this particular session in June of 2019, we are, I believe, a few weeks away from the official release of Bloodstained, uh, an indie game that was crowdfunded on Kickstarter many years ago now that is being designed and promoted as a sort of spiritual successor to the Castlevania series. The main director on the game, who goes by Iga, worked on the older Castlevania titles. I can't remember off the top of my head which ones. But the quote-unquote classic formula Castlevania games he worked on. And over the years as Konami, the company that owns the rights to the Castlevania IP, have slowly but surely continued to burn bridges with the fans of their games and their properties, doing things like firing Hideo Kojima from their staff to ignoring a lot of their major brands and not doing anything with stuff like Contra or Castlevania and further sort of spitting in the faces of their fans of those franchises by focusing on pachinko themed machines doing stuff like hey there's a new Castlevania coming out get excited and then it turns out it's this pachinko theme pachinko game that has a Castlevania theme in general Konami sort of gone from being one of the most beloved video game producing companies to being one of the most loathed just due to their handling of their internal brand properties and their overall lack of interest in creating quality games. That sort of led to Iga deciding that he was going to create his own spiritual successor to Castlevania and that's how we ended up with Bloodstained. I think Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is the subtitle. That game is a 3D rendered, but two-dimensional, side-scrolling, action-adventure, beat-em-up type game with a female protagonist, and it's very much designed like a Castlevania game. After it successfully met its Kickstarter crowdfunding goal of, I think, several million dollars, it made a lot of money. The game has been in production for quite some time. And a lot of people were skeptical to whether it was going to actually come out, especially with people still feeling burned from the whole Mighty Number no. 9 debacle. But interestingly enough, the game was eventually shown in a playable demo form at numerous press shows, and people were becoming more and more confident that the game was actually going to be released. Well, last month, would have been in May, a teaser trailer for the upcoming release came out. And one thing that developers and Iga did that surprised a lot of people was they directly addressed a lot of the feedback they've been getting from their community as the game's development has been ongoing. There have been a lot of people sort of complaining and criticizing the graphics and lighting and overall presentation of the game, saying it wasn't really up to par with their expectations. So rather than forge ahead and release a subpar product like the Mighty Number no. 9 team ultimately did, 
Iga and crew went back and overhauled the graphics. And in this trailer showed the, the new and improved product, which was considerably different and much better looking in my opinion. And it definitely helped get people on board with the upcoming release of the game, given everyone had been, still been somewhat skeptical at the time. So just seeing that was very interesting, and I'm looking forward to picking up the game. I'll probably be picking it up on PC. That way I can record it for Let's Play purposes, and I believe it'll run a little bit better on the PC build. Even though a game like that would probably be the best on Switch as far as portability. I think I'll see how it runs on PC first. But that comes out towards the later part of June. Well, that'll be interesting. Okay. We have the main outline cleaned up on our flying fox whale creature. What I want to do is address the other part of the description from the generator and that's the fact that this creature comes from the future now bat or flying fox whale creature is strange enough but the fact that the very first line in the description says it comes from the future had me thinking what's the best way to to deal with that i think the only real route to go when trying to create a futuristic design is to just turn it into a robot. So I was thinking as I was finishing up the outline cleanup, how I wanted to do that. I think this thing is, is decently sized, but there's a lot of room to sort of work with different parts of the, the base design. I thought, what if I gave it robot wings? But doing that would be kind of a challenge. Let's see. If we create some lines to divide up the wings, this should be very angular and straight like metal plating. Maybe what we can do is divide up the, the wings with sections and then add sort of bolts like, and screws to make it look like the wings are, are bolted onto the body. So let's see, we'll do two by one, two by one sections here so it doesn't take up too much space. And just put these in different intersecting points where these plates are. bolted on the body. And I guess we'll do the same on the, the trailing wing. This would be the back of the opposite wing. But if we were to think about how this creature would be constructed, we could think of it as the bolts going all the way through the panels on both sides, so you would you would see the the bolts on both sides of the wings, regardless of what front or back you were looking at. I'll put another one over here.
And I was thinking about this as I was drawing everything. I hadn't really quite committed to the idea, but to drive the point home that this thing is from the future, what if I gave it a robot eye? If I shade that the right way, then it'll, it'll look a little bit more like an actual robot eye. Let's see. What if we gave it a metal jaw? That is a little distracting to look at. I think I'll leave the dividing part on here since that's kind of reminiscent of the way whale mouths actually look. But let's see. Don't have a ton of space to really work with here. I was thinking, what if we added wires trailing from the wings? That might be a little bit too distracting, I think. I think that I think that gets the the general theme across. Oh, I almost forgot. This thing has green quills covering its skin. Hmm. That throws an interesting little twist to the idea I was working with here. Well, what if we give it a kind of quill-like underbelly here? That, I don't like that it looks at all. Quills are going to be a problem. Hmm. It's too bad you can't see this thing's back. Otherwise, I could have put them running along its back, kind of like a hedgehog. I think the key is going to be making it look like it's got quills on its torso. It's the only real place I can fit them in with this particular pose, I think. Maybe I can get everything in here like this and then Add some texture here to sort of make it look like the quills are kind of running along the front of the body. This this is kind of tricky, but I think I can do it if I just add in some sharp angles like that. And then the underside, I will just make this the whole under part green. This doesn't really give me a base color for the rest of it though. So I'll probably do a combination of greens and greens for the underside where the quills are and then a different base layer for the top. And then the wings will do kind of a silver gray to look metallic. And then I'll think of color for the bolts. I'm gonna do yellow or gold. So let's see what we can do with that. We'll start with the underside green. We'll go with the lighter green for the, the base. And 
what do we want for the body? The flying foxes tended to have an kind of orange brown color from what we see in the, the sample image here. They're kind of consistently this copper brown color. Let's, let's see what we can do with oranges. An orange whale face is an interesting idea. That'll probably look decently once shaded. And then the wings will go with a mid-tone gray because we're going to have to put darker highlights on it. And I think I said yellow for the, with the bolts. And then we'll go, I was originally gonna do red, but maybe we'll go bright blue, light blue for the eye. Okay. I think that works for the base palette. I think the shading is gonna help, help the design a lot. It'll sort of, It'll definitely bring out the, the depth and texture on the wings, but it should also allow me to create some additional detail on the face. So let's create the clipping mask. We'll go with the base color first. Shading, the orange layer is gonna be 10, light brown. Shade under the mouth. And shade the feet. This Sprite is pretty close to the same size, but not necessarily as busy as the last one. The shading overall isn't too difficult. If we do the wings, basically shading in between all the plated sections, and then underneath the bolts. I think that will that'll help bring out the kind of metallic jointed look of the wings, which is what we're going for here. The light source would be coming from above. Last couple sections here. Now I'm going to do the bolts. There won't be enough space on the bolts to add a white highlight, but I think it looks all right that way. They'll, they'll give it more of a dull, dull look as opposed to a shiny look. And I'll go in and do the quills. but not least the eye. All right, I think 
that will do it. This is definitely one of the more unusual creatures come out of one of these challenges. Overall, we are in end product here. I'm just gonna do some final final cleanup on the shading as I talk through the results here. Final result, or final product here, we have a bat-like winged creature. It's got a whale head and robot wings. I think the part of the description that threw me a little bit was the future part. Unfortunately, Cybernetics saves the day again. But overall, this one was kind of a, an interesting one to draw. The, the challenge of these random number generator descriptions definitely forces me to think a bit create, more creatively, which is the whole point of this exercise. But overall, I'm happy with the results. I'll have to think up a good and appropriate name for this particular creature as well. It'll go up with the post whenever I decide to put these online. But I think that'll do it for for this particular video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.